lots of changes since we talked about the Cincinnati housing market the last time. So today I'm going to walk you through what's going on in the world of real estate. And also I'm going to go out on a limb and make some 2025 predictions. Hi, I'm Rhonda with Comey and Shepard Realtors and let's dive in. So let's start with the national numbers. 4.2 months of housing supply indicating a gradual recovery from pandemic levels still below the balanced market average of five to six months. So that five to six months is when neither buyer nor seller has an advantage. Total number of homes for sale is up 22.6% year over year, making nine consecutive months of inventory growth. As of quarter three, 2024, the average home price in the United States is $420,400, which marks an increase from the previous quarter's $415,000. According to the Cincinnati MLS, currently in the Cincinnati area, which is Butler, Claremont, Warren, and Hamilton counties, our average sale is 355,000. And that is down just 1% from September and still up 4.8% year over year. Our lowest price property sold for $26,000 and our highest sold for 3.525 million. We did sell 1,520 units last month and we currently have 2,523 units available. That leaves us with about 1.66 months of inventory, which is well below the national average of 4.2 months. Out of those 2,523 units, 22% is new construction. And some of those are available to move right into, but many are not. Now, I do want to take a second and talk about rents, just so those of you coming from other areas have a little better idea of what's happening here. But the average rent in this metro area is about 15% less than the national average. So our average rent is $1,381. Many new units have been added though over the last couple of years. It just feels like we're getting pretty maxed out on the rentals at the moment. We were seeing prices drop, especially this fall in some of those areas that are closer to UC, but outside of UC, um, closer to downtown, and just kind of that, that surrounding area that is within about, I don't know, I'd say probably 10 minutes of downtown. But some of the new buildings out in the suburbs, they have waiting lists. I don't know why anyone would spend more than $2,000 per month on rent, but yeah. They are. But what do we think is on tap for 2025? Let's start with rates. Jerome Powell just cut the Fed rate 25 basis points. And however, they're not really discussing what they're going to do next year. Originally, there were four rate cuts planned. Now, there were six rate cuts scheduled for this year and we've seen two. But I wanted to show you the breakdown of which sectors are gaining, which sectors are losing jobs. And understand some of that job loss can be from those big storms that we saw across the South. However, there is potential for this to get worse before it gets better. So Jerome Powell, love him or hate him, he has been attempting to give us that soft landing. And I'm cautiously optimistic on that one. I think we'll know more beginning of the year. Price appreciation or depreciation? Well, nationally, the forecast is all positive. The projected growth range is from 4.4% at Goldman Sachs on the high end to three tenths of a percent from Moody's. Just wanna point out, they're all positive this year. That's, I think, a really good step in the right direction. But the average of all of these forecasts is two and a half percent. Not exactly what we want, but it's, it's pretty good. It's solid, we'll take it. But what about locally? We are starting with much lower inventory than the rest of the country. So supply and demand will 
reign supreme. Here's the thing though that no one is really talking about. New construction prices will probably increase late this year, early next year, due to shortages of materials. Why? The storms. So all of the damage that was done in North Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, Georgia, and Florida, they're gonna be rebuilding those areas for quite some time, and much of the materials could be pulled down there instead of getting it up here. Or just in general, we will have shortages and we may have to pay a little bit more to get what we need. If there's an increase in new construction prices, resale homes could likely be more in demand. Maybe not COVID levels where there were 20 offers on every home, but I do think that that is a possibility in certain areas or for that specific home that is just amazing. But will you be able to find a home in 2025? It's no secret that 2023 and 2024 have been slower years in the real estate world. 2024 is so far the lowest number of home sales since 1995. Now, multiple sources are projecting more homes selling in 25 than either of the two previous years. So this will likely be a combination of factors like folks actually just aging out of their homes. They've been waiting and waiting and waiting for the market to get better so they could downsize. And they've probably now gotten to the place where there's no point. They just move on to the next phase. But also interest rate decreases could spur on some additional sales and then possible increases in foreclosures. Why a crash may or may not be on the horizon consumer debt has gone through the roof over the last few years. Now, I love this graph. It, you can see how much mortgage debt there is there in the orange, and it is higher than ever. Auto loans are in green, light blue is credit card debt, and student loan debt is in yellow, and it's a bit shocking. And I do believe there are some people just kind of teetering on the edge, holding their breath and hoping that nothing changes in their world or it could just be really catastrophic. But let's look here. This green line shows how much equity homeowners actually have in their homes. And in fact, about 40% of people in the US don't even have a mortgage. Their homes are owned free and clear. The orange line is the current mortgage liability and the blue line is the value of the properties. So unless you purchased your home in the last year or two and you did little or no money down, you probably have enough equity in your home that if something does start to go completely sideways, you might be able to do a cash out refi. I'm not usually a big fan of borrowing against your house, but again, if that would fix the problem, might be an option. And then the other option would be actually selling your home before you were to lose it in a foreclosure. So what does all of that mean? Well, my prediction is that we will see probably three and a half percent price appreciation in 2025. And that's kind of an average for the area. So it might be higher in some of those hotter places like Hyde Park, Sycamore Schools, Mason, Madeira, you know, but yes, those might go higher and there might be some that are lower as well. Now, we do have a lot of new construction coming. So I do think we'll see more homes sell next year. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and I am going to claim it. We should have two to three months of inventory available throughout most of the year if interest rates get down to the low sixes and they possibly look like they're heading into the fives. But what do you think? I would love to hear your thoughts and feel free to reach out to me directly or start a conversation in the comments below. And if you've been thinking of selling, there is a link in the description to get a free home valuation. Thanks for joining me today and I will see you next time.